So before I start my presentation, I have a question for you. What does stake mean? So it is a stake, and if we connect many stakes together, it becomes a fence. If any one stake breaks, the fence becomes unstable. If you imagine this fence as a company, then if any of the stakes break, the company could be at risk. Good morning. I'm Yuran Li, and the topic I'm going to talk about today is E. Freeman stakeholder theory. E. Freeman, whose forename is Robert Edwards Freeman, is well known for his seminal work, A Strategic Management, a Stakeholder Approach, published in 1984. So, what are stakeholders? Stakeholders are individuals and groups who influence organizational behavior and the achievement of organizational goals. If a company has an influence on someone or something, then the company cannot ignore these entities. So the definition of stakeholder is broad. Anything you can imagine that can be influenced by the company can be a stakeholder. For example, if you buy an airplane ticket, then you, you are the stakeholder of the airplane manufacturer. Now imagine if the airplane manufacturer reduced some of the safety features on the plane to save money. Would you still choose to fly on their plane? Probably not, right? Because many consumers are so safety conscious, they will avoid airplanes made by this manufacturer when processing will, 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 when purchasing air, airline tickets. So in this case, the airplane manufacturer has made improving TSR a priority at the expense of a TSI. Therefore, in the context of stakeholder engagement, Companies need to consider the ethical implications and treat their stakeholders responsibly. Stakeholders' value need to be taken into serious uh, consideration. Uh, companies create value and influence their stakeholders, but they are also influenced by their stakeholders. So how do we identify and differentiate our stakeholders? The classic stakeholder map includes the following five stakeholder types, customer, employees, financiers, communities, and supplier. These five types of stakeholders are considered to be the ones that companies need to give the highest priority to. In the content mentioned in Chapter 3, Jack Ma emphasized three important values of the Alibaba Group. These three values are customers, employees, and shareholders, Alibaba's most important stakeholders. So, an extension of the stakeholder map includes additional stakeholder categories and distinctions. For example, cap, uh, companies may distinguish between primary and secondary stakeholders. Primary stakeholder could be the five classic stakeholders mentioned earlier, and the secondary stakeholder can be government, uh, competitor, uh, consu uh, consumer advocacy group, and the media, among others. Business leaders need to differentiate stakeholders by um, uh, analyzing their power, influence, and the um, way they exercise their rights, taking their values into account to make more decisions. This is uh, not only it is not only important to focus on the key stakeholders, but also to identify potential stakeholders who can also have a significant impact on the company. A good example is the uh, uh, Volkswagen emissions scandal. So in September 2015, the Volkswagen Group was caught by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Um, they were selling vehicles in the United States with built-in cheating program to circumvent uh, official inspections. So, and in fact, uh, the vehicles were emitting 10 to 40 times more, more than the limit. A uh, West Virginia University laboratory discovered this through testing and reported to the EPA. The story eventually came to light and Volkswagen cost about $33 billion. In this case, Volkswagen went against ethics and uh, ignored the potential stakeholders. They were the EPA and that, and uh, even that of West Virginia University Lab. Because it was these entities that discovered and exposed, exposed the incidents. So as we can see from this example, companies need to identify not only easily identifiable stakeholders, but also potential stakeholders such as NGOs, hackers, civil rights groups, uh, environmental movement, and unions. So <clears throat> future communities, uh, ecosystem, and non-human spaces are also stakeholders for business. 
businesses and uh, ecosystems influence each other. For example, fishing grounds are overfished and fish habitats and uh, ecological balance are destroyed. So fisher uh, fisheries have to abandon fishing. Also, non-human species are uh, affected by uh, commercial activities, and in turn, non-human species can affect businesses. For example, commercial activities have led to broken bee ecosystem and a decline in bee product, uh, populations. So uh, fruit trees that were previously pollinated by bees now have to be hand pollinated. In these three stakeholders, natural ecosystem and non-human species are critical to the sustainable survival of uh, future communities. Future communities uh, depend depend on non-human species, which in turn depend on ecosystems. Humans cannot live without ecosystem, nor can they live without non-human species. Therefore, companies should pay special attention to these three stakeholders, both on an ethical level and in terms of um, sustainability. <clears throat> in summary, organizations should focus on the interests of all stakeholders, uh, actu um, actively identify potential stakeholders, and consider the ethical implications rather than blinding, uh, blindly pursuing TSR. Uh, business managers should uh, in incorporate each stakeholders into organizational decisions and focus on social benefits. Uh, businesses need to focus on three stakeholders, future community, ecosystems, and non-human species, which contribute to the competitive advantage and sustainability of the organization. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.